Hi, I'm Justin Thames, Director of Governmental Affairs for the Florida Institute of CPAs. And with me today is our outside consultant, Jennifer Green of Liberty Partners. As Florida voters head to the polls for the August 28th primary, they'll make decisions on the U.S. Senate race, four statewide cabinet posts, including governor, 27 congressional seats, 23 of the 40 Senate seats, and 120 House seats. However, ballots cast for the November 6th general election will include all of the statewide and legislative races and 13 proposed constitutional amendments. And Jennifer is going to walk through some of those constitutional amendments with us today and give us a little bit of background of how, how we've come to 13 amendments for the ballot in November. Thanks, Justin. So here's a little background on the history of changes made to Florida's Constitution and more on what CPAs can expect to see on the ballot in November. From 1996 to 2016, Florida has had 79 proposed constitutional amendments on the ballot and 58 have passed. So that's about 73% of what has been put on the ballot actually passes. Of the 13 proposed constitutional amendments on the 2018 ballot, five came from the legislature or citizens initiative and eight came from the Constitutional Revision Commission. All have to pass by a 60% vote to make it into the Florida Constitution. Those 13 amendments include two related to property taxes, two related to gambling, three related to criminal justice, two relate to government structure and public office abuse, one relates to tax increases, uh, one relates to school board member terms, and two amendments combined would appear to be very different topics. One is a prohibition on offshore drilling and vaping indoors, and another amendment that combines military survivor spouse benefits and public colleges and universities. So Jennifer, there was a recent poll that in indicated that out of the 13 proposed amendments to the Constitution, there would be only four that would be likely to receive 60% of the vote that's necessary for them to be added to the Constitution. Tell us a little bit more about those four and specifically uh, why they may be getting a little bit more attention than the others. Sure, sure. Those include uh, Amendment 1, which expands the host homestead exemption on property taxes. Uh, Amendment 3 gives voters, not the legislature, the exclusive right to authorize casino gambling in Florida. Then you have Amendment 7, which addresses first responder and military benefits. And finally, Amendment 8, which largely addresses school board term limits and board powers. What's really surprising is that an amendment to ban offshore drilling isn't polling high enough to pass at this point, but you have to wonder if it's because it has been combined with banning indoor vaping. One of the criminal justice amendments placed on the ballot by the CRC combines victims' rights with increasing the age for judicial term limits, two issues that appear similar but don't poll high with voters at this point. Another amendment placed on the ballot by Citizens Initiative automatically restores the voting rights of those convicted of crimes except murder or sexual offenses. Those criminals would continue to seek reinstatement of their voting rights th through approval of the entire Florida cabinet. So regardless of how you feel about these myriad of issues, it's safe to say that studying up on both candidates running for statewide and local races as well as the 13 amendments to Florida's constitution is imperative. Yeah, that's a great point. Sounds like it's going to be a very long ballot this year with all these amendments. And Jennifer, by the way, thank you for all the hard work that you and your team do on behalf of the FICPA. We really appreciate it. And, you know, we want to leave everybody with a reminder to don't forget to vote on August 28th and November 6th. Also, you can watch for more information for the FICPA on all the candidates, races, and con constitutional amendments as the elections get closer. So with that, we want to thank everybody for your time today, and we look forward to having a chat with you in the future.